Welcome to the week seven college football power rankings. Grab a flaming mo. Let's dissect these top 15 teams. We have in front of us Alabama. It's a bye week. I don't know what to add there. Uh, Oregon looks quite good against a ranked Washington team. Probably shouldn't have been ranked in the first place. No reason to move them up or down. Oregon looked quite good. South Carolina takes down Georgia in a big way. Absolutely shellacking the Bulldogs. I like South Carolina a lot. They go to LSU. They have Florida later on on the road as well. But get through those two huge games. They end, of course, with Clemson. Get through the, the big SEC games. There's a case we made for number one or number two. Watch out for the Gamecocks, especially in that volatile SEC East. Florida hosts LSU, shuts down LSU, makes LSU's offense look foolish. They are a top five team. That's why I have them at number four. They have Georgia later on in the month. And then they have, of course, Florida State at the end of the season, but Florida's looking quite good. That defense will lead them to all sorts of fun wins. West Virginia goes to Texas, wins on the ground, wins by shutting down Texas's offense enough, surviving the Texas pass rush. West Virginia is quite good, but they still have a lot of meaty Big 12 games ahead of them. But the good news is a lot of those are on the road. Notre Dame looks quite good in completely dismantling Miami in Chicago. That defense is as good a defense nationally as either Alabama or maybe just slightly below Alabama and LSU, but ridiculous sideline to sideline, especially that front. They will be tested. They have Stanford this week and then Oklahoma and BYU in the coming weeks. Their, the offense is going to take some lumps, but Notre Dame is a top. They have a ceiling of a top three team. They're quite good with that defense. Kansas State takes care of business against Kansas. They don't have much on their schedule. They're looking quite good. They finished with Texas. It's going to be a good year for Kansas State. They're a double digit win team right around seven, six, five. That's their ceiling, but that's a really good ceiling. LSU goes to Florida. Hard to fault them too much for losing to a very good Florida defense. Mainly the defense is what stopped LSU, but LSU is still a top 10 team because that defense is capable of beating anybody in the country. That includes Alabama on November 3rd when the tide traveled to Baton Rouge. Ohio State points on points on points against Nebraska. And here's the terrific news if you're a Buckeye, even though Ohio State won't be playing in the postseason, they have nobody left on their schedule. They are in the leaders division of the Big Ten. They end with Michigan, but really it's Braxton Miller's time to get yards and, and then more yards and then six points and then more six points. So Ohio State terrific. I don't know what their ceiling is just because they're not nationally relevant with the bull band, but do take them seriously. USC starts slow against Utah. In the coming weeks, they do have teams that will be able to take advantage of the mistakes that USC has been making early on in games, Arizona most notably in the coming weeks. But USC is quite good once they realize that they have Marquise Lee and Robert Woods on the outside. If they can keep the running backs healthy, Silas Red and Curtis McNeil do keep that offense balanced. I still worry about the thinness on both lines, but USC is as good as anybody at the offensive skill positions. Florida State loses to NC State. Here's the good news, as is the good news for a number of these teams. They don't have anybody left on their schedule. It's an ACC slate of really what everybody nationally thinks the ACC is. They do end with Florida, but that does not affect the conference race. Oklahoma has Texas this week in the Red River Shootout. We'll learn a whole lot more about them. They have Notre Dame later in the month, and they do finish strong uh, against some top Big 12 opponents. But Oklahoma has too many questions in the run game. Defensively, they're inconsistent. I do like the Sooners a lot. They have a ceiling of about seven or eight as well. Texas is a good team. You can run on Texas. They have all sorts of offensive skill talent, especially in the backfield with the emergence of Jonathan Gray this past week against West Virginia. But you can run on Texas. So they should be good enough to beat Oklahoma. Their schedule isn't terrible. They finished with TCU and Kansas State. They are a top, even with the loss to West Virginia, they could be a top five or six team when all is said and done. Georgia could not run the ball against South Carolina. When Georgia can't run the ball, they're a very average SEC team. Aaron Murray had all sorts of trouble with South Carolina's defense. The good news for Georgia, other than Florida later on in the month, they don't have a single other ranked team on the schedule. So they could end up being in that SEC East race, even though they are simply a tier below South Carolina at least. Clemson, another team with not all that much on the schedule. They finished with South Carolina. They're a good team. They have the offensive skill, talent. Defensively, they're still inconsistent, but there really wasn't anybody else I would put at 15, especially Oregon State is number 10 in one of the polls. Oregon State is not a top 10, nor are they a top 15 team. They struggled against Washington State. They've beaten some decent enough teams, but you look at who's below them, they're simply not there yet. But again, a good team, Oregon State, do watch out for them. They host Oregon in the final week of the season. If Oregon State continues to play the way they've been playing, it should be a terrific game. They're just not there yet. So let us know where everything should be reshuffled. Who's too high? Who's too low? Where did I screw up? Where did I go right? How is your Flaming Mo tasting? Let us know. We'll see you next week.